Hello, everybody. This is the Chocolate News Podcast. And this week's podcast is sponsored by the Ohio Lottery. Keep it fun, Ohio. Play responsibly. This is your co-host, John Alexander Reese. And your co-host, Andrea Carter. And if you didn't know, the Cincinnati Herald has been around since 1955 and is the leading African-American-owned newspaper in the greater Cincinnati area and northern Kentucky area. So how's it going, Andrea? It's fine, John. I mean, it's 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 looking outside. There's snow flurries coming down. Yes, yes. My I'm... favorite. I love winter. It's uh, it's my favorite season. And folks, I'm being sarcastic I, about that. Uh, I'm not ready. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not ready. I haven't even flipped my closet yet. I'm not ready. It's, it 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 came too soon. This time last year, we had cold weather with rain, but that was it. There was no snow. I think you know, I think climate. something that I think something that spoiled us though was that we were having w- a warm winter for a while. So now I'm just like I'm spoiled. It's like I want the warm winter to continue. I know that's not happening, but oh well. Well, I mean, I think we're going to have a warm winter if it doesn't go below twenty. Yeah, true. I'm good, but yeah. if it hits zero, I'm like, oh my god. So you know, it's 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 a work in progress. Um, and it's an adjustment. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm ahead of my calendar. I'm making plans for Christmas and I got to get the Christmas shopping. You know, I'm just looking to next year. So I'm like, okay, right. And tax season. So, you know, I'm just like, okay, what do I have to do? So right. when I, whenever the first snow occurs, it's like, oh my God, this is what we have to deal with now. So, so what are some of the chocolate news stories of the week? I would say a lot of stories besides the pins and needles of the House and the Senate. This week is, is a lot of updates. I think the saddest story right now is the shooting that occurred at the University of Virginia. Yeah. Um, it is so, uh, you know, it's so sad to read that these football players who who um, were in a class, went to see a play with their teacher. They also ate in an Ethiopian restaurant they were having a good time. There was no animosity, nothing. And as they get back to campus, this guy comes out shooting. Mm. And um, and it's kind of sad. And if anyone doesn't understand what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the the suspect has been arrested in the University of Virginia shooting where three football players were killed on the bus um, after they returned from a school trip. And um, they went to see a play about Emmett Till. And um, they um, also, the teacher who paid for the trip um, also took him to the Ethiopian restaurant and came back. And the young man, the suspect, Christopher Darnell Jones, was part of the trip. He had been invited on, on this trip by the teacher. and But he, he never really socialized with anybody. He always sat away from the group. And everyone was checking on him. The teacher spoke with him. He said he was fine. You know, there was no animosity or anything. He just was not, in, he was not engaging with everybody. And this young man is a former football player too. Um, he played for like one year and then he wasn't on the team anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, when the bus got back to campus, he came out of blazing and shot three students on the bus. And then he shot two more students I think, I believe outside of the bus when he got off the bus. Mm. Um, And it's just, it's just a shame. I can't believe this has happened. I mean, because these guys weren't doing anything wrong. They were having intelligent conversations. They were energized by what they saw. They were taking a playwright class. That's the reason why they went to see the play on Emmett Till. So, um, and it's just, I just, my heart goes out to them and the families. I feel sorry for the students who were on that bus because you just think of the trauma. Yeah, that's, that that's really unfortunate. I'm I, That just made me so sad hearing this story. Next up, locally in Cincinnati, um, today we've had three schools receive false threats against them. Um, Withrow High School, Dater High School, and Western Hills High School all were um, received, um, I guess, bomb threats. Um, or there was, oh no, I'm sorry, claim there was an active shooter at the schools. Yeah, I think they call it swatting, I think. I think that's what it's called. Yes, they're called swatting. And then Gamble 
Montessori High School was under a lockdown procedure last week because of the same thing. And, you know, they arrested two students last week for making false threats because they wanted to get out of school. So I don't know what happened today um, with these three schools. I, I mean, I hate to think that, you know, this was going on. I know everyone's excited about Thanksgiving next week. You'll be out of school. But this is ridiculous. This is, they're not the only ones receiving threats around in the region. There have been um, 12 threats made to various schools in the tri-state area and including in Dayton, Springfield, Newark, and Toledo and Cleveland have also received 911 calls about possible active shooters or bomb threats. Schools are supposed to be safe havens and um, instead they're becoming um, unsafe targets um, for whatever reason. I don't understand why. Um, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, people think it's funny, which is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. And, you know, it's kind of sad, but I hope they catch whoever did this because people need to pay for these actions. This is like doing a death threat to a school is like yelling fire in the middle of a theater. Yeah. Um, you don't want to cause undue trauma because even if nothing occurs, the trauma of a child in that situation will not feel safe going back to that building. And why would you want to harm someone mentally like that and not feel safe? Yeah. Schools are supposed to be a safe place. Why destroy that? You know, that that if you destroy that, well, then where can kids go to feel safe if not at home? Um, but that being said, I just wanted to let you all know, also let our um, Chocolate News audience know that the press, that the FBI released a statement yesterday updating on the threats that targeted a number of HBCU schools earlier in the year. Remember back in February, where an, I think uh, like over 50 HBCU schools received bomb threats? Yeah, I do. I do remember that. And they are, um, from what they said, um, that it was actually it was in January and February. But what they said, they found it was one individual who is a juvenile. And they are monitoring that juvenile who is responsible for all these threats. And this juvenile used very a variety of different voices to send out these bomb threats. They did investigate and they identified several minors believed to be responsible. But as they continued their investigation, they found one individual doing this. Because of the subject's age, no other information is being released. So that just tells you that child is under the age 17. And we don't know what that individual has been taught in their home. And, you know, for them to get this idea to send bomb threats across the country at Black colleges, I'm wondering, what is he thinking? Was he thought it was funny? And then also, what is he learning at home? to think this was okay to do this and threaten individual lives. So that's what I get from this press release. But they're also, the FBI also said that they're also um, investigation investigating other unrelated threats, not this one individual, the ju juvenile did, but there were a few other threats between February 8th and March 2nd that affected 19 schools and um, they believe that these were done from someone overseas. Um, and they're still working on that. So that is the update from the FBI. Um, I know a couple of newspapers have picked up that press release and wrote stories on it, but nothing had locally um, or our, our Black Press USA has not picked up on this story yet. So I thought I'd go ahead and update everybody right now. So, but if anything more pops up, definitely we'll keep you in, keep you in the loop. Oh yeah, most definitely. So now the most exciting news. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, Trump announced yesterday that he was going to run for president again. Oh, goody. And I, I, you know, it, depending on who you talk to, you are um, either seeing people excited by this or people saying, 
okay, this has been there, done that, you need to move on. And I, and I think the best way to sort of explain his acceptance of this is um, the New York Times cover uh, the other day of yeah. um, what, what it was uh, yesterday. And it, and it was, they had, the cover was, you know, they had children of war, yeah. um, so, you know, gunfire, but down at the bottom, if you look at the New York Post cover, the banner down at the bottom is just Florida man makes announcement. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think, uh. and, and remember the New York Post was a staunch supporter, Rupert yeah. Murdoch. Yeah, you know they're they're owned by Rupert Murdoch. They okay. they are a staunch supporter of Trump, and now it's become Florida man makes announcement. And what's interesting, Fox News, they were covering his announcement, and they cut him off in the middle of it, and they they shied away from it and moved on to other issues. And from what the political pundits who did actually watch his announcement, they um they said it was lackluster. It was revamping of the same old same old. It's all about him and what he perceived was done wrong to him. He, you know, claiming that America needs to be made great again and all this other stuff. And everyone's pointing out, well, you know what? You know, we we still have the mightiest military in the world. Um, our dollar is strong. And even though we've been hit by inflation, we're starting to see it slightly decrease. So even though prices are high, they're starting to come down just a little bit. We may face a recession, but then again, if we do face a recession, it'll be a milder one than what everyone anticipate. And, you know, there's a lot, America has a lot going for it right now. And he's saying that we need to be great again. Mm. And so a lot of people are taking him with a grain of salt. And, you know, he's trying to blame everybody else on what happened regarding election night where all of his candidates including the last one was Carrie Lake, who's running for governor of Arizona. She lost yesterday. Yeah. Good. And that was the last candidate that he backed, except for J.D. Vance. Yeah, which is still disappointing. Ugh. Yes, it's very disappointing. But all I can say is Ohio is special. <laughs> That's all I can say. Mm. And they... um you know, but all the rest of his candidates were not supported. And yeah. what um, some people said, America has spoken. They don't want to hear doom and gloom. They want to hear, what are you going to do? They want to hear, how are you going to protect us? How are you going to fix our taxes? Are you going to raise our taxes? Are you going to give us a tax cut? How are you going to fight inflation? How are those of us who have lost jobs, tech companies are cutting jobs right now, where are we getting jobs to fill those jobs? You know, like there's stuff going on greater than make America great again. And on top of that, you know, when you do a presidential announcement, it's supposed to be upbeat. It's supposed to be happy. It's supposed to be hopeful. It's supposed to be joyful. You know, you want to engage people. Instead, this was all negative. And I think the moment that Trump caught everyone and did the negativity I think everyone is slowly, except for his diehard core, everyone is moving, moving off. But then again, you have his copycats, DeSantis in Florida. You have Kevin McCarthy. You have other leader, Congress people who believe in his faulty thought process, um, which will cause issues. And um, it's unfortunate but he's also going to have challengers in the Republican primary. And I think he's trying to start out early because everyone's pointing at him like, it's your fault. You need to go away. You know, you're not a kingmaker. You're a rainmaker. And the more he opens his mouth, the more damage he does to the Republican Party. And I think that's the reason why where everyone was hoping for this, quote, red wave, all they got was a slight whimper. Um, if you think about it, you know, the Dems retain the Senate. Um, the Republicans will probably retain the House, 
but it's such a small margin that one just one thing goes awry, the Dems can, can still control the legislature and get their way. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, oh, yeah, it should um, be interesting. It, um, there's still there's still seven races outstanding to see how much of a majority the Republicans will have. You know, the Dems can still gain seats to cut into that majority that it looks like the Republicans may end up having a small majority of one to two, maybe three seats. I mean, they flipped several, but they didn't flip like 40 or 50. They they flipped like six or seven. And, and I think it's a wake up call to the Republican party that despite the, you know, what they've done to gerrymander and do this and do that, at the end of the day, the voters have said, we, we trust you slightly. And I think they have a lot of work to do to build trust again with the American people. And the Dems, you know, they're still going to govern. And I, I think this good. I think this next year, two years, is going to be interesting when we get to the presidential election. Um, who's going to win? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm thinking it's probably going to be DeSantis, unfortunately, but uh, and and I can't believe I'm saying this, but if if I had to choose between DeSantis, well, uh, I really don't want to choose between them. But it's like I I'd rather have the sane one instead of the crazy one. So, but well, well, I think it's interesting. There are a lot of a lot of Republicans who want to run for president. You got Pompeo, you have DeSantis. Liz Cheney may run, Nikki Haley may run, um, Pence may run, which he shouldn't. You know, his book, he's, his book is coming out and, you know, he, now he's trying to distance himself from Trump. And I'm like, it's hard to do because yeah. now if you're in the primary and you get into that debate, you have to debate your record that's tied to Trump, who's, you know, who continues to say that the election was stolen where yeah. everyone else has said, no, it wasn't. And I, I think, and, and there are a lot of other Republicans who have problems because they supported Trump. Now they have to try and distance themselves away from Trump and change how history was and, you know, make voters believe something different. Now voters memories sometimes are a little short term, but I think in this instance, especially with January 6th, and on top of that, there are a number of Republicans who voted to take the, the presidential election away from Biden um, when they were trying to, you know, reaffirm all the, the electoral votes. You have a lot to take a look at and hold up to because the Dems have a lot to work with against these Republican candidates. The only person, two people, I would say, out of the Republican candidates who may run, who don't have that baggage per se, is DeSantis and Liz Cheney. Now, Liz Cheney, she's Republican. And, you know, I differ with a lot of her views. But at the end of the day, she is a believer in America and a true patriot. And she believes in the Constitution. And I think she will set a standard for any candidate running for president on what they stand for and support. But then again, how can you support anyone who's Republican because they voted for the Supreme Court justices who all said they were going to uphold Roe v. Wade and look what they did. So, you know, they have a lot of trust to build up in these day and age. And I think Representative Josh Hawley said the best. He said the Republican Party as we know it is gone. And there's so much infighting going on right now within the Republican Party that it's going to be interesting to see how long McCarthy stays speaker, if he can even manage speaker. But then again, he has to win the majority vote of the House to be speaker. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it should be interesting. It, definitely uh, entertaining, but interesting. It is. I think it is. I think. I think we're in for. I think the Republicans are in for a fight to prove that they can they they can 
they're not after power, they're after to govern and prove to the American people once again that they are for them and not for, you know, right-wing conspiracy, QAnon, blah, blah, blah. I, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done, not only on a local level, but on a national level, because all the Republican parties follow the talking points set by the national, and it trickles down to local. And I think on a local level, we need to be asking the same questions that we ask at the national. Are you for America? Are you for the, our form of government? And if you are not, you need to step aside. Because I think at the end of the day, we need to ask, where is your loyalty? Is it to party or to country? And I think we need, I think we need to establish that, yes, we belong to a party, but we believe in America and the ideals that have been set by our forefathers. Republicans prove that they're for money, big business, and power. And they're willing to do away with what we believe in to maintain their hold. And I think people need to take a step back and look at that and just say, is that what we want? Because there's still a lot of people out there voting against their interests and just vote for party. Yeah. And there are a lot of Democrats who do that too. But at the same time, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, vote for who you believe is going to represent you and work on behalf of you. Yep. So that is the, all the news that we have. For right now, I mean, um, Congress, well, I guess we should say that Congress, the Republicans have a majority of 218 right now, but we're still waiting on seven House races. The Dems are at 210, but we'll have to see how many much more, how many more seats they will gain in the House because they can still try and get their agenda through. It'll be a little fight, but Republicans are now showing that they're not being loyal. I mean, if you look at it today in the Senate, a number of Republicans broke with their party to vote with the Democrats to codify the gay marriage rule. So that same-sex marriage is, is law once again in America. So that way, if the, the Supreme Court tries to overturn anything, they can't. It's been codified. Now they have to do, really, you know, abortion and some other things. So right. let's see. Because I still like for them to uphold the vote. I want that John Lewis bill to be passed. So, I mean, that that's something that needs to be done. And we'll see if Republicans will pass it. Because I think what's going to be interesting is how many Blacks voted with Republicans. And because very slowly Blacks are eroding and going back to the conservative side um, than the liberal side. So there's a slowly everyone is eroding but there are a lot more people who voted independent than they voted with a party and mm. that's something interesting to watch as well yeah you know, we just have to say what's going you know it, it, i think there's there's a shift happening politically in america where people are finally questioning who works best for them and i think black americans because they see the power of their vote they're now letting the Dems know either you work for us and help get through some of our issues that we need, or we're going to go with the devil that we know and just live with it because we've been living it for a while and we can still survive with that devil. And, and I think that's a powerful argument going into the votes of the future. You know, um, who, who are people adjusting to? Who can they live with? Because you know, that message. The Dems got to get get a stronger message and, you know, do something. So yeah. that's all the chocolate news I have for today. Well, thanks, Andrea, for coming on, discussing all the chocolate news. It's always appreciated. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's always fun to see. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? What? Oh, Karen Bass. Oh, that's right. That's one. right. How can we forget? I totally, I, you know what? I totally forgot. One more good piece of hot chocolate news that just occurred yesterday. Um, well, no, within the last five minutes. Right. Yeah. Karen Bass as of this recording. became the first woman elected as Los Angeles mayor. And I think she's the first black woman yes, elected she as Los Angeles. So, I mean, she defeated Rick Caruso. Um, the billionaire de developer has been 
um, that was a very contentious and um, racist race like you've not seen. And she is she's going to be mayor, a city of 4 million people that emerged from with the pandemic, with a landscape of tech camps, debris, economic anxiety, and spiking violence. So everyone's going to be looking to her for leadership. And um, um, I think that that's fantastic that she did that. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So good for her. Yes, definitely good for her. I'm very proud of her. Um, oh, yeah. Anyway, um, once again, this week's podcast is sponsored by the Ohio Lottery. Keep it fun, Ohio. Play responsibly. And I just want to remind our viewers that we are on break next week because of uh, Thanksgiving. So, um, folks, make happy sure Thanksgiving. you... Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, make sure you uh, eat lots of turkey, hang out with your family, and uh, just tell, tell them how much you love them, all that good stuff. Watch some football. Go uh, shopping on Black Friday, get those deals and everything. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. Our podcast is on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Amazon, YouTube, and Google Podcasts. And in addition, the Cincinnati Herald is looking for news distribution and delivery agents. So please contact our publisher, Walter White, at 513-680-7076. For more information. And once again, happy Thanksgiving. And I'm John Alexander Reese. And I'm Andrea Carter. And have a good day. <laughs>